I'm Thyle, and for the past few months, I've been recording my journey of starting my very own small business. I've quite literally started from nothing, all the way from outsourcing metal cut signs to being able to afford parts to build a custom CNC plasma cutter. Today, I'm continuing that journey by cutting out my first customer order on the new machine. This is giving me big hopes, but it has to work. So we got my first customer ordered sign. I'm gonna go here and try to cut out, but first I actually need to calibrate the machine. So just to make sure it's cutting the right dimension. Let's go take a look. Holy crap. Yeah, that's all rust. I guess that's what you get for... <laughs> Dude, that's caked. I guess I'm gonna need to drain that out and clean that a little bit. This is this water's been in here for about a week. No anti-rust or antibacterial or anything. The thing is, the steel really isn't even that rusted. It's just all the water. Crazy. All right, go in. To be honest, other than the look and possible smell, I don't think there would be a problem with just leaving the fluid in there and cutting with it. Do not do what I did, guys. Do not do what I did. Just more of a aesthetic thing with me. One thing I wish I could have done over is probably put a cross break in the water pan. Because as you can see here, the water is almost just sitting stagnant. Partially that's because of the unlevelness of the table. Unlevelness? It's not level? Yeah. <laughs> Got some nice brown sludge. Gross. Other than making the table more level though, I could really see how cleaning these things out could be a massive pain in the butt. But I, I've never done it before, so let me know down in the comments how you guys usually clean new. out your water table. Maybe I can uh, get some guidance from that. If I had the funding, I would definitely do a downdraft. Probably not on a smaller table like this. Maybe that's in the near future. What I thought was really interesting though is that the slats themselves, they weren't actually rusted. There was some there was some sort of foam that was just sticking to the metal slats. That was that was the orange part you're seeing that I'm spraying off right here. But the slats themselves, it looks like the mill scale did a pretty good job at protecting. Okay, so now that that's done, let's calibrate this machine. Within open builds, we're going to navigate to the wizards and tools icon at the top of the screen. Then select the access you'd like to calibrate and pretty much just follow the on-screen instructions. Damn it! Wrong side. I really gotta go on the back side of that. Okay, to the back side it is. I decided to use a caliber for my yeah. measuring instrument. I believe this is a little more accurate than what I've seen other people do, where they just scribe one mark and then measure both marks and whatever the difference is. Here I'm actually zeroing out the caliper, so I just read whatever is off the caliper at that point. 100.38. So again, all of my values were actually really, really close. To be honest, I probably didn't even need to do that because this is plasma cutting and the kerf is gonna vary so much that it might not even be worth it. What you guys didn't see me do is draw up a few test squares in sheet cam. I made a three by three and I'm testing different speeds at 45 amps. So I guess now would be a good time to try that. And when I take the calipers out and measure it, it should be really, really close to three inches. Okay, first one is at the recommended hypertherm speed, which is at 177 inches per minute. To be honest, I don't even know if this machine can go that fast. I don't know, it might be close to 177 inches a minute. Oh, it is, yeah. So technically I'm going 394 inches per minute. Not bad. I mean, at least that's what the software says. Whether or not that's doing it in real life, I have no idea. So let's load this, load some stuff up. I would really rather be doing this with some water in here, but I do not want that to happen again. So before I put any more water in here, I'm definitely getting some of that anti-rust and bacteria. I told myself I wasn't going to include any of the programming involving sheet cam because the tutorials on YouTube are so exhaustive. I feel like I'd just be wasting my time going over that again. But if you guys are really interested, I'd be okay with making a few videos. Drive runs good. Let's bring this back to Z or zero and turn everything on. You guys saw how I um, put my desiccant filter and my air dryer in on the last video. The uh, the beads are already turning white, so I don't know what that quite means, but apparently I have really wet air. Okay, I ran into yet another problem. Yep, I can hear it clicking now. So the postcode that came with sheet cam 
if there's just a generic one that you can download from a list of like hundreds of posts. That one, for some reason, fires off of M3 and M5 to start. And the GRBL 1.1H that I downloaded, you have to have a spindle speed in there. So it has to have an M3S1000 on it or something just to turn the spindle on. So I'm not entirely sure. Well, one, I can modify the post and sheet cam, or I can try to modify gerbil, gerbil, GRBL. That might be a little too deep um, for what I wanna do. I'll figure it out for now, testing purposes. I'm just gonna put the S1000 in the G code editor within open control. And right now that's working. So now round three and make sure the torch is on, on. That's exactly what I expected. And then once we do it again. The freaking ground cable every freaking time, dude. I cannot remember that from my ball cap. All right, round 20. Okay, so <laughs> that loud ass air compressor shut off. Dude, that was really, really good, not gonna lie. And should I say it? Should I say it? And there's like barely any slag or dross or whatever you wanna call it. But this, like, dude, I'm not even playing. There's literally, there might be a sum on the four corners, like when it fell in. But bruh, you know what I think was wrong on that last test run I did in the other video? Was I was using 12 gauge but I was running it at the seven gauge speed, which was like 85 inches a minute. And this is 177. So like right in the middle of the recommended. And that did so much better. Moment of truth, 3.0395. So I'm 40 thousandths off, which is probably due to the kerf. And on the other side, the same thing, 3.0395. So dead nuts. Bro, I think that's pretty freaking good if you ask me, man. This is the front side. Here's the lead end. And then the back side. That gets me pumped. Let's go. So since that faster speed worked, I'm not even going to bother with that other one. I had a few test files, but they were all slower than that because I wasn't sure exactly where to start. I went in the hypotherm manual and pulled the numbers, but they didn't have exact numbers for 12 gauge. It was all 10 and 14. So I just took the middle value between those. Dude, crispy. Crispy. This sign, this first customer order sign is approximately 30 inches by 12 inches. And there's like 38 pierces. Let's go. Let's go. One thing that sucks about open builds, you can't travel in two directions at one time. Like I can't go X and Y to get there faster. So that just kind of sucks, but. Okay, I'm setting my zero right now and I'm gonna load in the new G code. I'll try to put up a screen recording of you with you guys. Okay, I got my zero set. I'm gonna turn my torch off for a dry run and just see what it does. Make sure I can hear the relay clicking. Make sure it's maintaining that height as best as it can. I haven't brought it up yet, but. That's some fast movements on those tiny letters. Okay, I did notice uh, about halfway through the dry run that it's super sloped down here. So this is what I used to gauge my height, which is just another piece of 12 gauge. And we have probably like another 16th of an inch to go before it makes contact. And down here, again, we're flat, so from here to here, there's about a 16th of an inch. I don't know what that'll do to the piece. Okay, guys, we're going full send. That is not my zero that I just put. Am I losing steps somewhere? Full send in three, two, one. Okay, it put a big ass hole in there. Um, the air compressor didn't fire right away, so I'm not sure what's up with that, but I'm gonna go again. Three, two, one, and fire.
Why? I was trying to get a better camera angle, but right as I shut the camera off, it hit one of the edges up here and just took the whole thing and just whoop. So that's why I have an E all the way up there. But other than that, it's like it's a piece of shit. Let's just say that. Good, I didn't even cut out half of the crap in there. So it actually looks kind of nice on the camera. One letter. And it was the most simple letter. Yeah, that actually clears it up really nice on the backside. Look at that. There's nothing. Can't sell that. Nothing got full penetration. So I'm guessing I just am going way too fast for these small amount of movements. The straight lines would probably be okay. And then couple that with the warping of the plate. Yeah, damn it, that pisses me off. So right here, it's all sorts of wiggliness from the, um, I'm assuming the kerf. Maybe that's just a learning point for me that I cannot do small letters like that unless I go to a thinner gauge material and the fine cut consumables. But even here, you're starting to see that. And I'm not sure, I'm not sure what it is. Okay, so the only other thing I can do that sheet's pretty much garbage. Um, maybe I'll set another zero on it and use it as a practice. I'll, I'm just gonna try to lower the speed, I guess. See what happens. Okay, I've now set the height off of what I believe to be the tallest corner. And I slowed it from 177 inches a minute to 85 inches a minute. So I'm using technically, technically I'm using the seven gauge speed, but I dropped it by five amps. Let's see if that helps anything. Dang it, dude, my eyes hurt from looking at that. It looks like my uh, bearing block is hitting the grate, which I thought I checked for clearance on that, but maybe that warped up too. Dude, it moved the whole freaking table. Look at that. That whole, Jesus. So apparently I got some work to do, but it did, it did the big letters really, really well. It actually did the smaller ones much better. So if I can find a good uh, consistency between speed and amps, then uh, we'll be okay. I mean, that could still be improved a whole lot, but these guys did really well. Uh, okay, I think I had enough for one night. There's a few things that have become apparent. One, I'm 100% gonna need a Z-axis with a torch height controller if I wanna do any work that's borderline intricate. Two, to minimize any sort of warping, I'm gonna need the water in the pan, probably up to the part. It's gonna be the waiting game again. Uh, as far as this customer piece goes, I told the guy I could have it to him in two or three days, and that was two days ago. So what do I do? Wow, actually I'll tell you what, I, what I'm most likely gonna end up doing is just cutting it out at work. Okay, there's a few options. One, I can ask him for a redesign and I'll redesign it with all big letters and then I'll cut it out with water in the pan or I just cut it out at work or I get it outsourced to a laser place if he wants those letters that intricate. Oh, damn, just thought, like, I was been putting so much work into this and everything was just looking like you know, it's so promising. And then, yeah, uh, you, I mean, th those of you that know, you know, and it's just super frustrating, but if I'm gonna be doing this, I gotta figure out some ways to remedy this situation. So I'll just keep trying. I did end up cutting this one out at work just due to the time constraints. But at the time of recording this video, I've actually completed a few more signs with the new machine because Let's just say I made a few upgrades. If you guys would like to see how I set up the Z-axis, go ahead and subscribe. That video will be out shortly. Otherwise, check out the other videos in this series. Thanks for watching.